Welcome to Lesson 3 of Filmmaking Terms and Vocabulary. Today we're going to be talking about camera movement. Sometimes a camera can move like a person moves their head. You can move the camera like this, like you're nodding your head. You can move the camera like this, like you're shaking your head no. And you can move the camera like this. Like you're moving your head from one shoulder to the other. Sometimes the camera can move like you move your body. You can move your body forward, backwards, left, right, and even in a circle. What are some situations where a director would want to move the camera? A director might want to reveal more of a location or reframe the shot from one type of shot to another type of shot. You can move the camera to change your shot type from a long shot to a close-up. You might want to move your camera to follow a subject or to reveal something new in the scene. You might use the camera to reveal someone or something that the audience didn't realize was in the scene. In a dialogue or action scene, you might use camera movement to move the camera from one subject to another subject. So let's begin with the vocabulary of camera movement. If you don't have your vocabulary document from the previous video, that was tinyurl.com slash film terms C. The first term on our list is camera movement. Any rotation of the camera around an axis or traveling of the camera on an axis is camera movement. Our next term is the term used to refer to zero camera movement. It is the static shot. The camera is locked off, meaning it's stationary. When you have the camera on a tripod, if it's locked off, you have all of the knobs turned tight so that the camera can't move at all. The camera in a static shot is typically on a tripod. Again, this means there's no camera movement at all. As you can tell, many beautiful compositions can be achieved with a static shot. The beauty of a static shot is that you have total control over the blocking, the mise-en-scene within the frame. It is very difficult to maintain beautiful composition throughout a moving shot, and many directors will plan out every step of a camera's movement to make sure that every frame is beautiful and has great composition. However, there is nothing wrong with using a static shot to compose beautiful images, and we see static shots used frequently in televisions and film. Next up, we have the tilt. Now, the tilt is similar to when you turn your head to nod yes. The camera stays in a fixed position, just like your head is fixed to your neck, the camera is fixed to one spot and rotating. The camera is not physically moving. The camera is staying in one place and turning on the axis. So we will turn and rotate the camera up and down. As you can see in these examples, this can be used to follow a subject that starts close and ends far away or the opposite depending on which direction you are tilting. It can also be used to reveal objects or to follow the action of a subject. The pan shot is different than the tilt shot. Instead of mimicking the head when it nods yes, the pan shot mimics a head when you shake your head no. So it turns from left to right or from right to left. It again stays in a fixed position, just like your head is fixed to your neck. The camera stays in one spot and rotates left to right or right to left. You are rotating horizontally. Again, this can be used to follow a subject through a scene or to reveal something to the audience or to move from one subject to a different subject. Next, we have the roll. Again, like your head is fixed to your neck, the camera is fixed in one position, but the roll camera movement is most similar to when you turn your head from one shoulder to another shoulder. When we mentioned the Dutch angle, we mentioned that your brain automatically keeps lines balanced so that your image does not change when you turn your head from one shoulder to the other. 
However, we also mentioned that the camera does not do this. So when you turn a camera, rotating it on the axis of the lens, you will see that the vertical and horizontal lines become diagonal lines as you turn that camera, rotating it on the axis of the lens, creating roll camera movement. Similar to the Dutch angle, the roll camera movement will create a disorienting, uncomfortable, strange feeling for your audience. It causes everything in the frame to rotate. We just discussed the three main techniques that can be achieved on a tripod by rotating on three different axes. Now we have a modifier. If we want to add an adjective to describe a pan that is extremely fast, we would call it a whip pan. A whip pan is when you intentionally whip the camera so fast that it begins to blur the image. This blur effect can be used for some pretty clever editing techniques that we'll learn about in the editing section of this unit. However, for right now, all you need to know is that a whip pan is an extremely fast pan that blurs the image. You can also have a whip tilt, which is an extremely fast tilt that blurs the image. Remember the difference between a pan and a tilt. A novice, inexperienced filmmaker or someone who's never learned about filmmaking will confuse these terms and use them interchangeably, but you should not. You should always use the term pan when you mean rotation from left to right or right to left, and always use the term tilt when you mean rotation down to up or up to down. As you can see, the whip pan can add energy to a scene. In both of these examples, we're seeing high tempo, fast paced music scenes, and the whip pan is adding an intensity to those scenes. We are now exiting the section of our vocabulary that deals with a fixed position for the camera. The camera can now be moved around a location. Our next term will move the camera up and down. It is not to be confused with a tilt. Our next term is the pedestal. The pedestal is moving the camera vertically, up and down. The subject, what the camera is looking at, will remain level. You are not rotating the camera. You are moving up and down only, staying level with your subject. As you can see, the pedestal can be used to reveal more within the frame as the camera moves up and down. Next up, we have a general category. This general category is the tracking shot. A tracking shot is any shot that moves to follow a subject or to move through a location. Tracking shots include movements forward, backwards, or sideways, and tracking shots include all different methods of movement, including handheld, dolly, steady cam, aerial, etc. We will learn about these different methods of movement for moving the camera and it's often used to follow the action, to follow a character, or to follow a series of events taking place in a location. So the following types of shots that we're going to discuss are all examples of tracking shots, starting with the lateral tracking shot. The lateral tracking shot will move to follow a subject or move through a location from left to right. Similar to the pedestal, the lateral tracking shot should not be confused with a pan. The lateral tracking shot does not have any rotation. It merely stays focused forward while moving from left to right or from right to left. Again, this camera movement can reveal more of a location or if it's long enough and fast enough, can even track a subject as it follows that subject from left to right or right to left. Lateral tracking. Next up we have the push in. This camera movement is pushing in, tightening the frame around the subject. You can use a push in to change from a long shot to a close up on your subject. Tightening that frame, the edge of the image around your subject with a push in camera movement. Next up we have the pull away the opposite of the push in. You are pulling away from your subject, moving backwards through a location 
revealing more of the location or widening the frame around your subject. You can use a pull away to move from a close up to a long shot. As you can tell in the bottom two examples, camera movement can emphasize emotion. In the bottom two examples, characters are mourning the loss of their loved ones. Both directors chose to use a pull away to emphasize that emotional loss that the characters were shrinking. The environment seems to close in around them and the pressure of everyday life and of the loss of the loved one seems to crash down on them as we, the audience, leave these characters behind. Next up, we have the arc. This is a fun type of shot, but it's criticized if it's overused. The arc is when the camera moves around a subject. The lens of the camera stays pointed at one thing, but the body of the camera moves around the subject 180 degrees in a semicircle or a half circle. A 360 degree tracking shot is a full rotation around a subject. So it would take two arcs to complete a 360 degree tracking shot. Next up, we have the various methods of camera movement. As we mentioned for the tilt, the pan, and the roll, the best device to use would be a tripod, probably the best device, because those types of camera movements require a fixed position. They require the body of the camera to stay in one spot while the lens is turned to look at different subjects in a location. However, for tracking shots, shots that follow a subject or move through a location, there are several methods of camera movement including handheld, dolly, steady cam, cranes, and aerial devices such as helicopters or drones. The first method of camera movement we're looking at is handheld camera movement. In a handheld shot, the camera is held in the camera operator's hands. It shakes, matching the slightest movement of the camera operator. As you know, if you're holding a camera and you're walking, the camera is going to bob up and down with your body and your arms. So handheld movement is best when you want the camera to shake, to tremble, and as you can see in these examples, handheld camera movement can add a certain realism and energy to a shot. In the top two examples, it's adding to the intensity of the moment as the tension builds in the scene. In the bottom example on the left, the handheld camera movement and its wobbly nature adds to the intoxication of the character who has just ingested drugs. In the bottom right example, the handheld camera movement and the shakiness adds to the intensity of a fight scene. Handheld camera movement can be seen in a lot of television and film, but if you overuse handheld camera movement for too many shots in a row, you can make your audience feel sick. Next up, we have the steady cam shot, and this is the solution to handheld camera movement. The steady cam is a stabilization device which absorbs the shock and vibration of the camera operator's movement, floating instead of shaking. As you can see in these examples, it will not be a perfectly smooth movement, but it will smooth out the bumps and shakes of normal handheld camera movement. You should be able to tell the difference between handheld camera movement and steady cam camera movement. Steady cam shots float or glide through a scene, so the bumps from camera movement appear more to be slow, floating bobs as if the camera were floating in the air. Next up, we have the dolly shot. The dolly shot is one of, if not the most, smooth camera movement. A dolly shot is achieved on wheels or on a track. The camera is on wheels and or traveling along a track to create smooth motion. A slider can achieve this movement over a short distance, and a dolly track can achieve this movement over any distance as long as you have enough track. As you can see, dolly tracks can be straight or they can be curved. In the bottom right example, we have an example of a curved dolly track 
which is a full circle around the subject. Dolly shots are great for achieving smooth push-ins, pull-aways, or lateral tracking shots. Next up, we have the crane shot. And if you're familiar with a construction crane, those were the type of cranes used in the earliest crane shots. Nowadays, we have special cranes designed specifically for camera operators. The camera is on a large mechanical arm, also known as a jib. This is used to raise, lower, or move the camera anywhere that that crane can reach. You should be able to tell the difference between a crane shot and any other type of shot. Crane shots can get low to the ground and raise high up in the air, but they are limited by the size of the crane. Next up, we have the aerial shot. This is when the camera is airborne on a drone or helicopter. Because helicopters and drones are very loud, these are not good devices or camera movement methods to use when you want to record audio at the same time as video. So in the case of a drone shot or a helicopter shot, an aerial shot, you will probably see these used most often to establish a location or to track or follow a vehicle. Now that we've gone over the different methods of camera movement and the different techniques related to camera movement, I want you to try these on your own. If you're a student in my class, I have a specific list of the types of camera movement that I want you to achieve. And I have some recommendations for how you can achieve them on a low budget with only a cell phone. For example, if you want to achieve a static shot on a cell phone, you would use some kind of phone stand. And if you don't have a phone stand or a phone tripod, you can make your own. There are many guides online for making cheap phone stands, ranging from using styrofoam cups to paper towel rolls to constructing them out of cardboard. And if you get creative, I'm sure you can figure out a way to stand your phone up and make sure it's not moving. Remember, we're recording all of these camera movements horizontally, widescreen, just like you see in television and film. So when you stand your phone up, make sure it's standing up horizontally. Make sure you like what you see in the composition and then record something moving around inside of the frame. The camera does not move, but in a static shot, there can be movement of your subjects. So within the mise-en-scene of the frame, make sure either you or some other subject, like an animal or a vehicle or another person, is moving inside of the frame. Record at least four seconds for your static shot and make sure you trim off any parts where you're getting ready to set up or done with the shot. Most phones have an option to trim the video before you upload it. So make sure you trim off any unnecessary pieces of the shot and rename the file static shot. Next up, I want you to achieve a tilt, a pan, and a roll. To achieve a tilt, a pan, and a roll without a tripod, you will want to try to keep your phone in one fixed position, only rotating the lens of the phone, but keeping the center of the phone in one spot. Try not to move your body. Try to rotate the phone in one fixed spot to create your tilt, your pan, and your roll. Again, try to trim off any unnecessary pieces of the video file before you upload it and rename the file tilt, pan, or roll. You should have one of each. Next up, you're going to try to achieve a pedestal shot. Remember, a pedestal shot is when the camera physically moves up or down. In a pedestal shot, you are not tilting the camera. The lens is fixed facing forward but the body of the camera is physically rising or descending. You can achieve a smoother pedestal physically with your body by squatting, by bending your knees, or by extending your legs to stand up. 
try to do this several times and submit your smoothest pedestal shot. Another better way to achieve a pedestal shot with a phone is to use a smooth surface. You can hold your phone against a wall as you slide it up and down, and it might even help to use a paper towel or to use some kind of fabric or towel to help smooth that movement out even more. Try a few different methods to achieve a smooth pedestal shot. Next up, we have the lateral tracking shot. I want you to record a lateral tracking shot from left to right and a lateral tracking shot from right to left. And I want you to label those files to tell me if it's a lateral tracking shot left to right or a lateral tracking shot right to left. To achieve this with handheld methods, you want to make sure when you're walking that you are not stopping with every step. If you do so, you will not have continuous movement. You need to do what's referred to as crab walking. So crab walking is when you cross your legs. Instead of pausing, you are constantly crisscrossing your legs. This may take some practice the first time you do it, especially when you're holding the camera one way and walking in a different direction. Remember, for the lateral tracking shot, hold your camera facing in one direction and then walk left or right in the perpendicular direction. So I'm either holding my camera to my left as I walk forward or backwards, or I'm walking sideways like a crab crossing my legs and I'm holding my camera forward but walking left or right to achieve a lateral tracking shot. Give this a few attempts and if you can come up with other methods than handheld movement, give it a shot. Perhaps you have a small device that has wheels like a small toy car that you can attach your phone to to create a lateral tracking shot. Get creative, and if you have to, you can use handheld movement. But if you're using handheld movement, make sure you do a few attempts and upload your best attempt. Again, make sure you trim off any mistakes at the beginning or end. If there's audio in your video that you want to mute, make sure you delete that audio before you upload it. Some phones have the option to save video only instead of saving sound and video. So you would want to turn that option off to just show us the movement because the audio is probably not what we're looking for. Next up, I want you to try to achieve a push in shot. Remember, you are moving forward towards a subject. You are not rotating the camera at all. The lens is staying pointed at one subject and your body and the camera are moving forward towards that subject. You might be able to get creative with different methods to use to imitate a dolly shot. For example, if you have an office chair with wheels on a smooth surface or a wheelchair on a smooth surface, you can achieve a smoother push in. Or if you have a towel on a smooth surface, you can push or pull that towel and whatever's on top of it will appear to move smoothly across the surface. So, for example, if you have a DIY or do-it-yourself phone stand or tripod, put that on top of the towel and glide the camera across a smooth surface to achieve a kind of fake dolly movement. However, if you do not have a creative option or a device for achieving smooth movement other than handheld, handheld will be fine. Just do your best to move forward smoothly. It might mean bending your knees to absorb some of the shock as you move forward through a location towards a subject. Try this a few times and upload your best example. Again, you can turn off the audio on your video and you can trim off the beginning and end so that we only see the best part of the shot. Next up, I want you to achieve a pull away. Remember, this is just the opposite of a push in. That towel on a smooth surface technique will be best for the pull away because you can stand behind the camera pulling it away from the subject. Again, if you want to use handheld methods to move backwards away from a subject for your pull away, that's fine. 
Just bend your knees to absorb the, the shock and the movement of your body as best you can and upload your best example. Again, you can turn off the audio and trim the video so that we only see the best piece of your pull away shot. Lastly, I want you to attempt an arc. Remember, an arc is a semicircle around a subject with the camera facing the subject the whole time. So when you move around your subject, make sure that your camera is constantly facing the subject. Try your best to keep your subject inside of the frame in the same location so that we rotate around the subject, but we constantly see the subject within the frame. Again, do your best to try to make this as smooth as possible with handheld movement, crossing your legs to constantly move instead of stepping like you would normally step, stopping slightly between each step. You want to move smoothly around your subject and upload your best example, trimming off any mistakes, just showing us the piece that you want to show us. Try to get at least 180 degrees, at least half of a circle around your subject for your arc example. Again, make sure you label each of these examples with the correct vocab term, and for the lateral tracking, make sure you add left to right and right to left for those two examples. Those are 10 video files that you'll be uploading for my class as examples of camera movement. And they can be achieved handheld with a cell phone. Just give it your best shot. Make sure that you rename the name of the file to match the type of camera movement. Last, we have three examples of camera movement and you should be able to identify the differences between each shot. Can you tell the difference between a handheld, steady cam, and dolly shot. How can you tell the difference? On the left, we have a dolly shot from Indiana Jones. Can you tell that it is a dolly shot? Can you tell that it is an extremely smooth push in using a dolly on a track? In the middle, we have an example from The Shining of a steady cam shot. Can you tell that it is a steady cam shot? Can you tell that it floats or glides through the air? with the camera operator. It is not on wheels. It is not on a track. It is being held by a camera operator and their movements are being absorbed. The shock is being absorbed by the Steadicam device. So instead of quick little bumps, we have floaty gliding movement. It's not perfectly stable. It's floaty and it's smoother than handheld. That's the key. It's not as smooth as a dolly shot, but it's in the middle, smoother than handheld. Let's look at the third example, the handheld shot. As you can see, the movements of the camera operator are translated to the shot. The bumps of moving up and down, the shakes as the camera operator moves his or her body forward are translated into the shot. So none of that shock is absorbed and all of the shake is in the shot of a handheld shot, such as this example. You should be able to tell the difference between a pan and a tilt, between a handheld, a dolly, or a steady cam. You should be able to tell the difference between a crane and an aerial shot. So with analysis practice, by watching more television and film and thinking about what type of movement is being used in each shot that contains camera movement, you will become better at identifying camera movement and analyzing camera movement. That's it for camera movement. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope that you have a great time practicing camera movement. We'll see you in the next video.